This is the huge screen in the manned spacecraft center at Houston in the Mission Control Center, where the first pictures of man on the moon should come streaming in. And of course, the first picture should be a lattice effect looking through a ladder and then into view from top to bottom, a large foot followed by another foot. I have a uh, static, a written static. I've got a little bit of a steady tone. Neil Armstrong says he's getting static. Uh, I don't think I hear that. The interesting thing about the slowness of these preparations for the walk now is that obviously they're quite determined they're going to have the best possible possible communications before they get out onto the moon's surface. Communications have been the, the thing that has slowed it down so far. Well, interestingly, Peter, the flight plan allows, I'm looking at it, um, more than 10 minutes for this. Neil, and, this is Houston. What's your status? And he's on been on 10 work. minutes. Now the control center is chiming in to find out how, how things uh, are going. Everything is go here. We're just waiting for the uh, cabin pressure to bleed, uh, to low enough pressure to uh, open the hatch. It's about point one on our gauge now. Well, that hatch is taking a long time to get open. I have tried to pull it open myself and it, I used the expression like a refrigerator door earlier on. It's more like opening... Alternative would be to open that one too. It's more like opening the vast door of a bank vault. Uh, Neil, this is Houston, over. No, this is Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, we're showing a relatively static pressure uh, on your cabin. Uh, do you think you can open the hatch at this pressure, about uh, 0.12 PSI? Uh, we're going to try it. Roger. Uh, the hatch is coming open. Hatch reported coming open at 109 hours, 8 minutes, 5 seconds. Okay, the valve's not open. Okay. Neil Armstrong just getting out onto the porch now. Did your water valve on, yeah. All eyes, of course, keyed to this giant television screen in the Mission Control Center where these first historic pictures of man's walk on the moon should come back. They should come back now within about five minutes. As he goes down past rungs six and seven on the ladder, he'll go past this plaque which they intend to leave on the moon. The plaque that gives their message saying that they came here, men from the planet Earth, first set foot on the moon, July 1969. They've been on the PLSS is now for 16 and a half minutes. That is a stainless steel plaque. Columbia, this is Houston. We show you near the high gain antenna scan limit. When you lose lock on us, we request Omni Delta. Omni Delta when you lose lock, over. Roger, I'll be down. Yeah, Houston has given them their final sailing instructions on We're antennas. We're eight minutes away from loss of signal on Columbia. Collins, of course, still circling the moon 60 miles up.
taking about two hours to go around the moon each time. Okay, my wind is clear. I'm going to go to run my coolant up a little bit. Okay, my wind is clear. It's open. Verified. Okay. Things radar circuit open. Right outside the lunar landing vehicle now. Okay, stand by now. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston. One minute, 30 seconds to LOS. All systems go. Over. Four minutes behind. Neil Armstrong on the porch at 109 hours, 19 minutes, 16 seconds. Got him 24 seconds. minutes into his backpack. No great critical item. He's being a little tentative, a little conservative. Everything in the past history of the Apollo program has shown that when it comes to crew suits and gear... Five, when it comes to crew suits and gear, everything seems to take just a little bit longer than expected. 25 minutes of PLSS time expended now. Okay, everything's nice and straight in here. Okay, can you pull the door open a little more? Right? Yeah. Okay. Did you get the base out? I'm gonna pull it now. He's just about to pull a ring on the side of the porch, which will drop open a panel. Houston, the Mesa came down. All right. A panel Mesa's on the down. side of the moon Houston, ship. Roger, we copy, and we're standing by for your TV. Any second, we should see TV. This panel is called. Houston, uh, this Neil, radio check. Neil, this is Houston, loud and clear. Break, break, buzz, this is Houston. Uh, radio check and verify TV circuit breaker in. Roger, TV circuit breaker's in. And reach back clear. Roger. And we're getting a picture on the TV. TV. Oh, we got a good picture, huh? Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a fair amount of detail. Okay, we can verify the position uh, the uh, opening I ought to have on the camera. Stand by. And there you can see the foot going down the ladder. There you can see the whole figure. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's uh, not even collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. Pretty good little jump. Uh, Buzz, this is Houston. F2, one one sixtieth second for shadow photography on the sequence camera. Okay. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Now. That's 
One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. shadow you you're seeing is Neil Armstrong okay, the, uh, on the surface of the moon. This engine did not leave a crater of any size. It uh, has about one foot clearance on the ground. We're uh, essentially on a very level place here. Uh, I can see uh, some evidence of, uh, of rays emanating from the descent engine, but uh, very insignificant amount. Two pilots are using a 
cloth, about three quarters of an inch wide, very thin, to lower a camera to the surface. And you can see the length of string, or whatever you want to call it, flapping around in the breeze. Rather like a preacher's boy that's used to winch sailors from a shipwreck to shore. You pull objects along it like a preacher's boy. The camera now is in a very shaded area. That will be improved when Neil takes it out 60 to 70 feet due well, off to the right of our picture as we look at it. He attaches this line to the side of the ladder, and then we shall see him. We have doing Surgeon some... says the camera installed on the ICU bracket. Surgeon says the crew is doing well. Data is good. Crew is doing well. And I'm still in the LEC on the secondary stretch. This cord is called the LEC. And next we shall see him doing some physical jerks to test his balance on the moon. I'll step out and take some of my first pictures here. Uh, Roger, Neil, we're reading you loud and clear. Let's see, getting some pictures and uh, the contingency sample. He's not just taking souvenir snapshots, he's taking pictures of the exterior of the lunar bug to show burn marks and any damage that may have been caused by the landing. You can see there his huge backpack, 84 pounds of earth weight one-sixth of that weight on the moon. All the time tending to pull him over backwards. Peter from time to time. Uh, Neil, this is Houston. Uh, do you copy about the contingency sample over? All right, you're going to get to that just as soon as I finish uh, these picture series. From time to time, we'll hear references to the PLSS or it's run together frequently as the PLIS, the Portable Life Support System. In other words, backpack. Mm -hmm. And this reference to the contingency sample is a quick scoopful, a cupful, as it were, of moon dust, which he will put in his left-hand trouser leg pocket. Now watch his hand go down for this sample. In the best tradition of late movies, I would say. He's taking out of his left hand trouser leg pocket a thing which looks rather like a butterfly net and we should see him shortly attach it to some rods so that he doesn't have to bend down and then drag it along through the moon dust and having gathered this two to four pounds of moon dust fold okay, it up are you getting a TV picture now, Houston? Neil, yes, we are getting a TV picture. Neil, uh, this is Houston. We're getting a picture. You're not in at the present time. We can see the bag on the LEC being moved by Buzz, though. Here you come into our field of view.
The backup camera is vision. Uh, okay, your bliss is, looks like it's clear and okay. The toes are about to come over the seal. Okay, now drop your bliss down. There you go, you're clear. And laterally, you're good. Got an inch clearance on top of your bliss. of the back to come down. How far are my feet from the Okay, edge? you're right at the edge of the porch. Okay. Back in from camera transfer with the LEC. Do you foresee any difficulties in SRC transfer over? PLSS is nominal on consumables. All right. 
late in this area. I don't think there's much of any fine powder. Some spots together, and it's hard to tell whether it's a clod or a rock. Notice how you can pick it up. Down it bounces, and then. down fairly easy. Get up my suit 30 at this stage. A mass of the backpack uh, does have some effect in, in the pressure. Now, and Mesa seems to be in good shape. 
have to be careful that you're leaning in the direction you want to go, otherwise you uh, slightly and eight feet. In other words, you have to cross your foot over to stay underneath where your center of mass is. Biotite is a brown mica substance. Okay, Houston, I'm going to change lenses on you. Uh, Roger, Neil. Life support consumable still looking good. That's affirmative. We're getting a new picture. You can tell it's a longer focal length lens. And for your information, all LEM systems are go. Over. For your information, all LEM. We appreciate that. Thank you. Four-sided, but uh, back to the one side. For those who haven't uh, read the plaque, uh, we'll read the plaque that's on the front landing gear of this lamb. First, there's two hemispheres, one showing each of the two hemispheres of Earth. Underneath it says, Dear men from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, July 1969, It came in peace for all mankind. It has the, the crew members' signatures and the signature of the President of the United States. Uh, 
good your uh, lenses is, but if you can touches above. Very much like a uh, very finely powdered carbon. But pretty, pretty looking. Do uh, pull out some of my cable for me, please. Stand on the ladder facing forward. The minus Y strut is the landing gear to your left. Hey, I am, bud. 40, 50 feet. Why don't you turn around and let, uh, let them get a view from there and uh, okay. see what the field of view looks like. Go back it into the cable. Okay. Uh, Roger 
Roger, you look okay as far as distance goes, Neil, and we'll line you up again when you finish the panorama. Neil, and we'll line you up again when you finish the panorama. Uh, you're going too fast on the panorama sweep. You're going to have to stop for... I haven't stopped. I haven't set it down yet. That's the first picture in the panorama. Right there. Roger. And, uh, just a, a, a north northeast. Tell me if you got a picture, Houston. Well, we've got a beautiful picture, Neil. Okay, I'm gonna move it. that one. Okay, now this one's right uh, down sun, straight west, uh, and I want to know if you can see an angular rock uh, in the foreground. Roger, we have a Picking large up, uh, angular uh, rock well. in the foreground, and it looks like a, a much smaller rock a couple of inches to the left of it. Over. And on beyond it, about 10 feet, is an even larger rock that's very rounded. That uh, rock is about, uh, the closest one to you is about sticking out of the, the uh, sand about one foot. It's about a foot and a half long, and it's about six inches uh, thick, but it's standing on edge. Roger.
system is still looking good. The next event will be to start removing experiments from the MESA, it's called, the Modular Equipment Stowage Assembly Area, that large locker that flapped down out of which Neil Armstrong took the TV camera. Before they get to that, they, they will probably take at least one rock sample uh, for which uh, Aldrin will hold a plastic bag which I think he's deploying now, and you'll see Neil Armstrong digging into the surface. Peter, does that agree with your? Yes, he's now about to use the moon tongs and the moon scoop and a coring device which digs a long sliver of moon out of the, out of the soil, and they will load this into a, an aluminum casket, which they will seal and this will be winched back inside the moon ship before they return to Earth. You insist on calling it a casket. We would call it a suitcase. It's... Neil Armstrong's been on the lunar surface now almost 45 minutes.
This is a United States Stars and Stripes. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's alright, I don't mind a bit. There it is. Five feet the by the TV. five feet oh, by three feet. Mike. It's oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. Beautiful, just beautiful. Yeah, that's the lighting halfway decent. Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. Beautiful, just beautiful. It isn't actually blowing in the breeze, but there is a spring that is holding it out straight. I think the figure on the right is Neil Armstrong planning the flag. He's just asked assistance of Buzz Aldrin. Okay. Planting the flag isn't just for prestige. He digs it in as hard as he can and sees how far he can penetrate the lunar surface. If it should ever fall over, there are four more United States flags painted on the sides of the base of the lunar landing vehicle, which will be left behind on the moon when they return. television cameras recording only one-third the normal number of lines that a standard commercial TV camera would look at. And this is done in, to economize on battery power, which is very dear on the lunar surface. The temperature in that sunlight now is probably something about 60 degrees centigrade. about twice as hot as the hottest day well, that Britain Houston has had this year. Over. Hi, Roger. Houston, loud and clear. Roger, out. Loud and clear, Houston. Roger, Buzz. See there the strange bounding walk caused by one sixth gravity. It's clear, Peter, that no large boulders are in evidence. No, they left them behind on the crater that they nearly landed in, but overshot I by four miles. I'd like to evaluate the. Uh various paces that a person can traveling on the surface. I believe I'm out of your field of view. Is that right now, Houston? That's affirmative, Buzz. You're in our field of view now. You do have to be. All right, you do have to be uh, rather careful uh, to keep track of where your center of mass is. Sometimes it takes about two or three spaces to uh, make sure that uh, you've got your feet underneath you. And about two or three or maybe four easy paces can bring you to a fairly smooth uh, stop.
This is one of Aldrin's tasks to check out the mobility on the surface. So call kangaroo hop. Does work, but it seems so your forward stability is not quite as good as it is in the conventional, more conventional uh, one foot after another. He has six things that he's to look for. His balance, the ideal walking or pace. Saying what a uh, same pace might be. I think the one that I'm using now uh, would uh, get rather tiring after several hundred. But this may be a function of the student as well as the uh, lack of gravity force here. Asked to report on friction between his boot and the soil. The remaining EVA time should be in the order of 50 minutes total. That'll be to button up of the hatch. Aldrin. Neil's been on the surface an hour now. Aldrin has the task now of measuring the brightness and the colors and the contrasts on the moon's surface. Houston, over. 